Hi. I have a written journal for you, and this one is from 820, the first of that day, and the Mayan day was 11 Earth. So it's toward the end of the cycle, and we should be able to see things coming together. The Mayan Tresinas are 13 days, and then they go back to one. Uh, day 13 being the day of ascension. Okay. Finally, finally, I feel like journaling again. It's been days, days of, of feeling burdened, too heavy and pained in my body to be able to do this. It's amazing how pain eats up your attention and concentration. It has seemed never ending lately, this heavy state. Not much fun to be sure. So even though I know that everything brings blessing, even this, that doesn't exactly lift it up or melt it away. I still have to slog through it. That's okay though. Just knowing that we're in the midst of blessings all the time does make things better. If you could come to believe this, you could see what I mean. It's rather hard to express. On the surface of things, it makes no sense, so it forces you to go deeper. When you do that, when you touch bases in heart space, then you can get what is meant, and it does lighten your load. So, although on the surface things look just the same, the pain and difficulty remains, it's not the same, not at all. What your attitude is when challenges hit make every bit of a difference. Your attitude can either help carry you through or just bring you down or keep you down. With a poor attitude, we tend to take whatever happens as just more proof that our lousy attitude is right. Life simply sucks and we use the current challenge as proof of that. But it's not. It's proof of our poor attitude, nothing else. With a bright attitude, you'd have more stamina and the load wouldn't seem so heavy and dark. We get what we believe. Life will prove us out no matter what we believe, and that's what we'll get. We haven't yet realized that's because it's what we're creating, but we're getting there. Things are backwards here in 3D. Instead of having our challenges seem to prove to us that a lousy attitude is the right and sensible one, let's turn it around. What would we get? If instead we choose to change our attitude first, then what follows would also prove that out. We don't always, we don't yet realize how very much our attitude shapes what we see. We could see the exact same thing as the guy standing by us, but not react the same at all. It depends on how we are seeing things. And we see through the veil of our attitudes and beliefs. They color everything. Are you open to seeing that? The less beliefs, the better. They color everything. Now, there's an easy way to test this. Just change your attitude about something. Instead of having a negative attitude, shift it to be more positive. Incrementally works fine. No huge shifts required. That wouldn't be real. You'd have to be really detached to pull that one off and most people aren't. Maybe the first thing to do though is to merely observe the self. Sit back and listen to your self-talk as well as your verbal talk. Now don't try to change it, just watch. Just look at your attitude to things. Most of us know someone who always seems upbeat, so we've seen that in action. Now imagine their self-talk you know it'll be far different than most. Maybe you can just imagine what it would be like to be them. 
you have a concrete example there. Observing is good, and detachment is great. It's really empowering. If we're not too attached to things, including our own ideas and beliefs, it's much easier to shift and change them. Do you see? Watch how you handle it when someone challenges something you've said, maybe a comment or a message online. How do you generally respond? Are you open or closed? Do you get angry? Maybe a sufficient attitude change would to make would be to just be more open. That would help. People would also enjoy being around us more. They would feel like we're really listening to them, as opposed to telling them how you think they're wrong or what your ideas are. Heart makes a far better listener than mind ever will. Mind is too full of itself, too busy. Heart is empty. <laughs> Do you know your divine? How far away from that belief are you? It's, is it one you could adopt? Or maybe you need some transitional steps in between. You could start out by just not being so down on yourself, huh? Start where you are, in other words, if you want your changes to take. Do you know what it feels like to be truly loved? You may have to go back to your childhood for that one, or maybe not. Most of us at least have a mother or father who knew how to love from a deep place inside. There's nothing else like the feeling of truly knowing you're loved, no matter what. Okay, now remember how very good that feels, how warm and inviting how safe it makes you feel. Got that image? Good. Now apply it to yourself. Turn it around and start to love the self like that, wholeheartedly, as they say. It starts with acceptance, and we've been trained, uh, programmed, not to accept ourselves. Our programming is to forever be down on the self and pretty much everything else. Well, it's time to ditch that, huh? All of our work is with the self, whether we know it or not. Well, that makes it really doable. No one else is involved, just you and you. We've not been taught that we're worth it, have we? Well, it's time to turn away from that. Those are weeds that need to be pulled up. Those are at the heart of maybe all of your bad attitudes, if you have them. If we're really down on the self, then guess what? We have no capacity to love another. Do you realize that? Your work on yourself will definitely apply to your life and your interactions with everyone else. As you develop your capacity to love your very own self without knowing it, you'll be better able to love one another. I know it seems backwards, but let's all remember that this is the backwards kingdom, life in 3D. Things go from within to without, from micro to macro, small to large. So start within and start small. It's the most successful way to get where you're going, which I presume to be higher consciousness or even ascension. Well, it just doesn't start out there. Taking classes or reading books is not how it happens, unless you apply it to yourself every step of the way. Besides, yourself is all you've got when you get right down to it. What else goes with you when you transition? When you lay the body down and cross to the other side, only you. You are your most precious gem, your finest gift or offering to life. So when you work on you, that's a gift you're giving 
to all life. Remember, it's fractal, totally connected in every way. Every little change you make counts. Is worthiness an issue for you? That's a good one to watch. To be on the lookout to spot issues of unworthiness. If you're human and living in the West, you have these issues. It's a big part of the programming we get here. They, the powers that were, don't want us waking up. Well, too bad, so sad, it's too late. We're waking up in the millions now. It is happening, my friends. May it soon go viral. Meanwhile, though, your arena is very small, so narrow your focus if you want to be effective. Bring it back in and observe only you. It's enough. You'll still pick up what other stuff you need to, never fear. Not only is higher self always on duty, but so are our guides and angels. We have loads of help, which can't reach out to us until we invite them. Keep that in mind. Free will, you know? Everything, no matter what, no matter how negative it might seem, is there for your benefit. Take that in. Try it on. It's the way of it. It's a fact. But until you can make room, you won't be perceiving it. You can take a perfectly beautiful gift and call it trash, something you don't want. It's just an error of vision. Why not choose to see it that way a while? To give this a try. It can't hurt. Not only that, you are so deeply loved by Source that your body wouldn't be able to withstand the full experience of that. It's more than 3D can contain. Try that on. You're divine. It will likely push your unworthiness buttons, so be prepared. All that garbage you took on while growing up, being programmed, will try to stop you being able to even go there, to being loved like that, to being worthy even. These are beautiful, if threatening to ego, threatening ways to begin remaking the self into something you'd be happy with. That joy you hear about so often, that could be yours too. Even though it may seem strange, considering how you feel, what you currently think of the self, yet that joy is also for you. It just takes some internal changes, likely quite a lot, yet each journey begins with the very first step. That's the only one you have to make, any of us do, the only one we can make, the one that's right in front of us. And anyone can do that. Another thing to watch out for, to keep a close eye on, is looking off into the future. People defeat themselves all the time by not staying with now. It's a classic challenge of anyone trying to quit a substance habit. Imagining how hard it will be to be sober forever. That's enough to get you down. We learned long ago that being sober just for today is all that's really required. We let tomorrow take care of itself. Day by day, now by now, nothing more. So stay out of the future. It tends to make things seem overwhelming. So how are you doing at loving the self? Have you made strides in that direction? I bet you have, even if unknowingly. The rising frequencies all around us help lift us up into this. Plus, you do have the support of your spiritual guides. Unseen, maybe, but not inactive. Give them the support of your cooperation, and you may be surprised at how far and fast you'll rise up. Higher consciousness awaits. 
let me share with you how much your feelings and attitudes count in some very concrete ways. The Heart Math Institute has done the research on this. They've discovered something so simple, it's amazing. If, before you take the next test in school or wherever it is, as a for instance, if you take just a minute and go within and then bring into memory a really good feeling, you'll score higher on that test. They established it with higher scores on actual IQ tests. So, if just remembering a really good experience and the great feelings it gave you, if spending only a minute on that feeling raises IQ measurably, so it was statistically significant, then let that sink in. With that one simple example, we touch the tip of the iceberg of how much attitudes and feelings count. What a difference they make. It would have been really interesting if they'd carried their test one step farther and had people recall a really bad experience. Spend some few seconds with that. I wonder. Actually, I suspect it would have significantly lowered their test scores. It follows anyway, though logic doesn't always work on things like this. This thing about attitude is very serious, or we could say very powerful. It's also an excellent way to get a peek into the programming we've been chocked full of. Until we're about seven years old, we're not yet in the beta brainwave state, what we call waking consciousness. Children spend their time in alpha, a very programmable state. So everything they experience goes straight to programming. They simply believe it all with no ability to censor or question. That doesn't come till later. Another thing to watch for in the self is any blaming at all. Whether you blame self or another or the big bad wolf for something, well, that's worth looking into. It's something to watch. That's called playing the victim, though we don't want to hear it put like that. It's to be in a very powerless state. Can you see it? How open are, are you to it? I know I didn't like hearing this when it was put to me a few short years ago. All the pain I've been in with this body throughout life and what it took to make it through that, how strong I had to be and so on, well, somebody cast that in another light for me. They told me I was playing the victim. I was completely and totally shocked. I was flabbergasted. I couldn't believe it. That seemed the farthest thing from how I saw myself. If I hadn't held the utmost of respect for the person who told me that, I would have brushed it aside. I would have just figured that she was just wrong, that she didn't really see me, didn't really know me, something like that. It was such a blow, I can tell you. Mind was screaming fits against it. I was stunned. It took days and weeks of just sitting with that. Not accepting it, but not running away from it either. Just letting it simmer in heart before I could even begin to reconcile with it. So I began watching myself. Eventually, it became clear <laughs> she was right. So I'm hoping maybe I can give that same gift to someone who listens to or reads this, the gift of looking at yourself in a hugely different light. I wasn't necessarily blaming anyone for my plight back then, but I was playing the victim all the same. <laughs> in spite of feeling that I was so strong to endure it for so long and not complain, stuff like that, I felt like anything but a victim. So don't go by how you feel. That's a mind thing. Stick to heart. My friends, 
we are making a difference in this world. And in the next one, we're birthing. We truly are, which only makes sense since everything is fractal. We know that much. So all of the changes we make while working within really count. They count for much more than that. By doing this sort of work, we also lift our brethren up. We lend them support. Our quiet efforts make a huge difference. One we can't yet see, but we will. So do hang in. I'm going to share with you a link to a lovely video that will most surely be a pick-me-up. Since it's a bunch of short stories, true ones, put together into one video, you may even want to take breaks between them as you watch. That's a way to let them sink in even deeper, to enjoy them more, and to have them make more of a difference inside. The speed of spirit is instantaneous, but the speed here in 3D is anything but. So it can take some time for things to penetrate, and that's fine. If we're just rushing through something that's deep, I can promise it's because we're focused in mind. Mind isn't aware of or attuned to things of spirit, yet. We can help it adjust, though. Pausing the play on deep things is just one way to do that, to become more attuned to the deeper places inside. I love you dearly, my friends. Yes. Even those that gripe at me for what I say, it doesn't matter. With all my heart, I give you my best here. Let it be the pick-me-up that lightens your load, even if just a little bit. It's time we all started to get more deeply acquainted with the self and to shift that relationship over to one of unconditional love. Don't make the self have to perform or behave in some certain way to receive your approval. That's toxic. Recognize that. Love and only love for you. That's what you're after. It's what you truly deserve. There is no earning love, no such thing. True love, real love, is completely unconditional. You are loved just for being you, just for being. That's all it takes. You exist. That's enough to merit this love. Though it may sound strange and maybe a little out of reach just now, it isn't. It's your birthright. Remember, you're a source being, a direct emanation of the divine. You are that. You really are. So, Accept what you can from this. What seems to way out, I only ask that you don't reject. Just table it for now, set it aside. You can come back to it later. Accept what you can, table the rest. Be willing to take just the very next step. Don't look too far ahead down the road. Let yourself know that you're worthy. You're an awesome creation. We don't yet know the fullness of who and what we are. That will come. Meanwhile, let us love self and one another, just because we can. I predict you'll actually be amazed as you take these simple steps. You'll find in yourself hidden reserves and qualities you didn't even know existed, right there within you. You'll also find your capacity to love and be patient and understanding with others will greatly increase. Now, don't go into it for that or any reason, of course. Hold no expectations. It's enough simply to grow in that love that's divine, for that's what this is. You see, the Father or Source, Prime Creator, God, whatever we call that, loves you so deeply, it's frankly unimaginable while yet here in 3D. 
and what you'll be doing as you nurture and come into that love relationship with self is harmonizing with source with that love that's as good as it gets in your efforts made to blossom into this love you'll grow closer and closer to God who will help you and carry you up into this love is truth any time we harmonize with truth, we grow ever closer to the divine nature of all of life. Our eyes begin to open our inner vision to see things truly differently. The scales begin to fall off as we shed our old programming that way. We also receive great assistance from all that's divine. It's a simple matter of harmonizing frequencies. It gets down to a sort of cosmic physics. Like attracts like. Don't even have to believe in God for this. And you'll shine. Did you know that you shine already? Right here, right now? It's been scientifically established that our DNA emits light. Light that can be measured and worked with in the labs. Dear friends, we are not meant to cast any shadow at all. We've been calling ourselves light workers and light beings for so long, and we know that's correct. Well, this is just the next step in our complete and total conversion into light. Soon we'll shine so brightly it won't matter where the sun is in the sky. It won't be possible for us to cast a shadow. Won't that be just grand? And our light will be the lifting of mankind. I'm just seeing it. Rainbow light emanating, shining, and our eyes able to see more of those frequencies so that we can begin to see the shining in one another. Everything you do to another, you do to the self. Perhaps you know this? Well, wouldn't the reverse hold true as well? Everything you do for the self, you do for another. That's just how I see that it works. All very neat and scientific. Once we get around to readmitting consciousness, spirit, or soul back into the mix. Finally, when your heart is so full of something and you just don't know what to do with it, when you have no outlet, please begin writing down whatever comes up. Give your inner voice the respect it deserves by this way of listening to it. You'd be surprised what you can learn this way and how glad you'll be later that you recorded some of your footsteps along the way. You are worthy. You are worthy. You are so deeply worthy, my dear hard friends. If you can't yet see it through your eyes, then borrow mine. They're here for you. And I see you this way. Your ultimate worth. Is incalculable. It's so great. And you need never more fear ego taking over when you find your way into true center into heart or deep into the now moment. Only that you'll find sufficient emptiness there that stands in for humility. There is no ego in heart. And if my eyes won't do for you, then look through the eyes of the Heavenly Father, the Divine One, himself or herself. Look through those eyes at you. However you do it, friends, find a way to look through the eyes of love at yourself. Remember, 
You are worthy, deeply worthy. You are a source being sent from the very heart of the divine. You're on a mission here, but you can't know what that is until you sufficiently drop the ego, for ego and mind are barred from such knowing. Put on the divine, for you are divine yourself. Find that in you. If you don't see it yet, then set out to watch, and watch closely, for you will. It's there. It's really that easy. It's just that beliefs get in the way. We've been lied to and lied to endlessly, but right now, that just doesn't matter. We have and are overcoming that so completely that at a certain point, Simply, all of the old programming will go bust, poof, and it is gone to trouble you no more. Your freedom is at hand, my friends, but it is totally necessary that you reach out and claim it. It won't just be given to you. It doesn't work that way. You have all the wisdom, the sacred knowledge you require right there inside. You're a flipping miracle to tell the truth and you will flip this world right over on its ear and set it right side up once again where truth and love will reign. No more will greed and its resultant poverty rule the day. Love enter stage left, right and center come in and remind us we are divine. Take us by the hand, dear love. And make our crooked paths straight. Clear away the scales from our eyes, the haze from our gaze, and make things right. Let people begin to even see the bright light their eyes emit when they're in light. Shine, beloved one. Your identity was stolen from you once upon a time. Now claim it back. Take your place on the throne in your heart. Rule over the self from that Christed perspective. Namaste.